the best kind of networking because I'm like, oh, I see you have an Optimus Prime G1 there. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have Megatron? <laughs> <laughs> no, you laugh, but that's that's what it's all about. I mean, I mean, I would never be here if I didn't meet Will in, in that anime expo and wasn't like. I didn't go up to him and be like, you stole my job, I hate you. I was like, well, you know, he's, he seems cool. He seems crazy. I'm down with that. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> and so like any, anyone in here, I mean, um, it seems like that people who go to school have a leg up because all those friends and stuff, if one of them get in, then the rest kind of follow. So if so, if you meet anyone here and you're, you're down with them and you like Transformers, then <laughs> you start talking. It's and like the Naruto, Hatsune Miku, you know, Code Geass, Gurren Lagann generation. Right? That's the We're dinosaurs, man. Yeah. Yeah. And Transformers. So if you like One Piece, or you like Naruto, there you go. There you go. Now you're we'll talking about that. <laughs> or you like Gren Naga, you know, talk about it. And then maybe one of you will get in, and then you'll be like, hey, I was that guy at Anime Expo. We are talking about you know, Grand Naga, remember? Oh yeah, you wanna, you wanna come work for me? Sweet. <laughs> Is that how it worked? That's, that's exactly oh. how it worked. By the way, I feel like, like a third of Teen Titans was built upon the love of Footy Footy. I mean, that's like, <laughs> like that's how it works. Yeah. I, mean, like, I mean, there's scene by scene shots that are exactly the same. I mean, the hospital, you know, getting all wacky whenever there's a big fight on the inside like that was, you know, specifically used in a Teen Titans episode, and it's because they all love it. I mean, it's actually not malicious because they just care about it and they bring their art to the table. So, I mean, that's that becomes your foundation. That becomes your language. What do you think, Brianne? I didn't watch Fully Fully until I started on Titans. Oh. Uh, I was on season three of Starting Uh huh. So, um, I like it. I also think parts of Fully Fully are partly like Gainax really likes like old Western animation too. Like there's a lot of Looney Tunes stuff in there, yeah. so it it comes around. Yeah. Gainax. Is... There are some scenes like is it Spike the spider? That's that's Kitty's boyfriend. Like I remember seeing that scene. I remember calling Ben like, dude, that's that's that part. There's like that thing goes over head. It'll sink in. No, it's not like yes. Brianne Allen, what do you uh, advise us for networking? Me? Yeah. Well, animebooks.com. I I supply half of the Titans crew of the FLCL PBD. <laughs> and so the if you, drug dealer of one of them is. Yeah, if you don't know, Alan Wan is our drug dealer in the industry. Like, like if you end up working making cartoons, you will he will be the drug dealer because he supplies all our art books, all our DVDs, our toys. I was there in Warner Brothers one day where some guy's like, yo man, where's my Summer Wars book? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, mom, man, I gotta look at those Summer we Wars We are so <laughs> in debt. Like, everyone's like, okay, next week, next week it's coming. Everybody that runs a show, like the big time producers, the, 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 the showrunners, they all like owe Alan money. <laughs> that's how I wrote. No, I, I, that's a fact. That's a number one fact. Alan like, owed me money one day in Japan. That's right. Oh, yeah. oh that's <laughs> <laughs> oh. see what goes in <laughs> In the animation industry, you will owe Alan one money. <laughs> um, can I, like the networking thing? Yeah, networking. Um, so, I got the job through the message board. Well, the person who posted on the message board they were looking for a designer was Matt Youngberg. And he was already, um, he was a storyboard artist, right? At the time, yeah. He was working as a board artist on Titans. and. He had told me how he eventually got to Warner's from Cal Arts was our freshman year, he applied, um, we have a job fair every year. And I guess Warner Brothers was there. And I'm not sure, I think it was maybe him. There we go. Yeah, they were looking for employees and he didn't get a call back. And this this goes into the whole thing, like if you want it, you need to work hard, you need to try, you need to get it. So he, he went up and asked them, he's like, hey, you know, I didn't get a call back, but I'm really interested because I love Batman and all this stuff, like what, what can I do? And they're like, but well, you don't have any samples in your portfolio that shows that you can like, hit the style. So he went back, did everything, and he applied, and I think he got an internship with them? Uh, I think it was freelance pages. Okay, well, it, I mean, still, that was, his, that, was, that was basically his break. And then when they were looking for a designer on Titans, he posted on the forum, we need a designer. So I applied, and I wasn't super close with Matt, we were on good terms, but 
he recommended me because he remembered I got my stuff done in college. I got all my assignments done, plus more. I was always working on my, on my personal stuff and getting my films done. So I think there was a little bit of like a trust that was like, okay, like I can recommend her because I know she'll do the, do the work. So um, that was that was my like um, um, networking experience. You know, like things you know that you're doing now, they might two years later then know, and then then something might happen. You never know. You know, seeds you plant now might go into. Hey, if you guys are in the LA area in October, there's there's actually a fantastic business convention that um, artists go to called a uh, CTN Creative Talent, Talent Network. And actually, for all the artists and you know, animators and designers, it's really good. It's in Burbank. I think it's, what happens is all the studios and all the production companies have booths there, and they all look at portfolios. Alan One has a booth there. And they, yeah, and they all like sometimes there's artists there who like rent a booth and just show. And it's actually a hyper focused animation industry only professionals event. Right. And actually, it got so big that last year I think it exploded. Yeah. And there are just people with portfolios everywhere. But you could really meet so many people. And you know, you'd be sitting right there, like next to like Mike Magnolia, like who created Hellboy, like showing his stuff. Going like, what are you doing here? And also, all the big studios are there too, yeah, like, the like Warner Brothers, right. DreamWorks. They all do portfolio reviews. Yeah, definitely go if you're if you're an artist serious in LA trying to just see what the playing field looks like. Yeah. Because you'll see some awesome work, and you'll really know if your book can hold up or not. Yeah. Um, Brian? I have another networking idea. Um, it kind of goes back to the whole thing where everyone who works in animation has such like varying backgrounds, which I think is good. It's good to have diversity. Um, I have a couple friends who actually applied for internships. Um, yeah, that's really important, right? Yeah, and like my friend Claire, she applied for an internship at uh, Cartoon Network, and she um, was an intern, I think for a year, and then she was an intern on Transformers, and then they needed a color stylist, and she, and she was interning. They don't have, they usually don't have you do art when you're an intern, because of um, like union, reasons. union stuff, yeah. Because yeah. they can't, they don't pay you usually for internships, and if they don't pay you, they can't get art from you sort of thing. But anyway, so she was doing the internship, she got to see how the production works, to see where she, if she wanted to go on the production side, she wanted to go on the artist side, and she was able to see how to put a portfolio together, so she did freelance color styling on Transformers, and then they hired on full time for color stylists, and now she's doing BG paints and um, color styling on Generator Rex. So, um, yeah, that's like a way to go through. And actually, um, if you guys want the websites to find how to, how to find those internships for Cartoon Network, yes. um, <laughs> uh, wbjobs.com, like Warner Brothers, wb. Um, Jobs.com. Jobs and you can also check turnerjobs.com. Like Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers are within the same corporation. Yeah. yeah. And we even have an intern on Scooby right now. Like, so, I mean, sometimes the interns, you know, they move on to other things or whatever, but and it's hard to get internships. I tried applying when I was in college for Nick and stuff, I never heard of that. So it's a little bit of a lottery, but it's worth it. The more I, you put yourself out there, the higher your chances are going to be. I definitely recommend internship. I mean, that's how I got into my position. Um, I mean, I asked for an internship over at Tip House, and that's how I met Eric, George, and um, from there on out, it just it just sprung. You know, I ended up over at Abad doing some Disney stuff, and then for some odd reason, I got a blind phone call from the head of production over at Warner Brothers, and they asked me to come over, and so all of a sudden, like, production managing on Thundercats, I have no reason. I don't know why I'm even there. That was, that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> you're, no, you're cool. Well, I, I, met, I, I went to a Tip Mouse party and I met you there, and you were already working there, and then like a couple months later I was on Batman, you know, and I was like, my first board job, I'm so scared, I'm gonna die, and it was like, oh, Will's here. And I was like, hi. <laughs> I also want to add in, like, if you, how many of you have a DeviantArt accounts, by show of hands? We are looking at those accounts, by the way. Like, like, not only do we work, but we surf the internet and, and look at DeviantArt accounts. 
And there's there's a couple there's actually a couple situations where we've hired people because of their deviant art. Also blogger. Oh blogger too. Like if you have a blog, if you do art, we're looking at it. I recommended a friend who lived in Australia with his blog spot and he's boarding on the new turtles and he boarded on Van But Damien Art definitely like yeah. that's yeah. Alan? I just want to reinforce that reliability issue that Eric brought up. Because with my many tentacles, I'm actually blacklisted at places because I'm not reliable. So don't just be reliable all the time. Maybe Alan. Yeah. Just keep working. Yeah. yeah, there's an old saying in publishing that was, yeah. uh, that was you, you, you're super talented, super reliable, super nice guy. As long as you got two out of, if you got two, you can get away with the third. And so, uh, there, you, yeah, I, I can speak from personal experience. Being, if, 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 if you meet somebody who's super reliable, a super nice guy, you're willing to, you're willing to cut them a little slack if they're not, the, not as talented as them. Exactly. Person. I mean, like, it's all about being able to work with that person. I mean, it's all about that team dynamic. You can be the best artist in the world, but if you can't work with other people, why would we want to work with you? That's also true. So um, we're going to move on, and uh, we're going to open the floor to everyone who has questions. And uh, just raise your hand, and then we'll pick you up. Start with the 